This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media.
is worthy. Yes, I request them that are sitting down if we could kindly rise up on our feet. Turn to your neighbor one more time. Give your neighbor a smile. Welcome them to the service. You can turn to the other neighbor. Welcome them to the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise Jesus? Ready. Then you can put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Woo. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, just wave those hands for the
There is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot turn around. Hallelujah. I am Wapi Shangwe Navigelege. All right, put a dance in your feet for Jesus, everybody. Put a dance in your feet for the
worship you. We exalt you. We give you all the glory and honor. Lift up your hands and lift your voice to him. Our king and our rock. Our salvation. The king above all kings. Worthy to be worshipped. Jesus, we exalt you, we give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Come on, worship him, exalt him. Our God, our refuge, our King. In him do we trust. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory, mighty King. Shalababalabizun to Lobuza. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, we give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, honor. You are wonderful. You are. He is worthy to be exalted forever. Amen. Let's be seated and let's appreciate the praise and worship team. Glory to God. Amen. I want to welcome you once again in this lunch hour service. It is an hour for grace. And God has a good program for you and plan to lift you, to change your life, to exalt you, and to heal you. Last Sunday, I began a series on teaching on... Um, on the supernatural escape from the global financial crisis. Jumapili nilianza msuluwa mafundisho kuhusu njia za kuokoka za kiungu kutokana na tatizo la uchumi wa kiuli muengu. And I feel prompted to continue in the same discussion this afternoon. 
na hisia kuweza kuendelea na hayo mazungumzo mchana huu so let's open the book of second kings nataka tufungue wafalme wa pili second kings chapter number 6 verse 24 downwards wafalme wa pili 6 The Bible says and it, it happened after this that Ben had that king of Syria gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria and there was a great famine in Samaria and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one fourth of a cup of doves droppings for five shekels of silver then as the king of israel was passing by on the wall a woman cried out to him saying help me my lord or king and he said if the lord does not help you where can i find help for you from the threshing floor or from the wine press then the king said to her what is troubling you and she answered the woman said to me give your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow so we boiled my son and ate him and i said to her on the next day give your son that we may eat him but she has hidden her son Now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes and as he passed by on the wall the people looked and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body then he said God do so to me and more also if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat remains on him today Elisha was sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him and the king sent a man ahead of him but before the messenger came to him Elisha said to the elders do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head look when the messenger comes shut the door and hold him fast at the door is not the sound of his master's feet behind him and while he was still talking with them there was the messenger coming down to him and then the king said surely this calamity is from the lord why should i wait for the lord any longer chapter 2 verse 7 i mean second kings chapter 7 verse 1 then elisha said hear the word of the lord thus says the lord tomorrow about this time a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and the two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of samaria now this are dire situations that this city of Samaria was going through. Hii ndio hali ilivyokuwa mbaya zaidi katika mji wa Samaria. The Bible says that the city had been besieged by the king of Assyria because I believe uh, he tried many times to come and attack the city but it was impossible because Elisha the prophet was always revealing the secret of his strategies to the king of Samaria. Ule mji wa Samaria ulikuwa umehusuriwa maana huo mfalme wa 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 Shami alikuwa amejaribu mara nyingi kukuja kuvamia Samaria lakini Elisha kila mara angezivumbua uh, njama zake. At this time he decided I don't know how he managed but he managed to come and set a strong siege around Samaria because he was angry. Na sijui wakati wao alifanya nini lakini alikuja akahusuru yana akapiga kambi kuzingira mji ule kwa maana alikuwa na ghadhabu kubwa. 
But I believe it is because the king of Samaria, he reached a place where, as we have read, he had contempt against God and contempt against his prophet. Na, na, vile tumeona, mfalme wa Samaria, uh, alifikia wakati ambapo, akawa anakiburi na madharau kwa mungu, na hata kwa nabi Elisha. And when a people disregard God in their rule and in their leadership, then God gives them up. And of course, when God gives up a king, all the subjects under him also get affected. Na wakati mbapo viongozi wanakuwa na madharau kwa mungu, mungu huachilia. Na hivyo inakuwa kwamba hata raya wawele watu katika ile inchi pia na watapiti haya matatizo. And so Ben Haddad got access to come and besiege the city of Samaria. Hivyo basi Ben Haddad ya kapata njia kuingia na kuhusuru mji wa Samaria. The siege was so bad that the famine escalated in that city it was so bad that people began to eat what they were not supposed to eat na hii hali ikazidi eh, ikazidi kabisa kwamba kulikuwa na shida watu wakawa kwanza kula hata na watoto wao you see when the enemy wants to take over your life he may use all kinds of methods he may use weapons, he may wage war, he may destroy your cities and destroy your industries or may destroy your farming capacity or he may simply put you under a certain siege where you have no capacity to be productive. Na adui akitaka kushambulia atatumia mbinu nyingi, sila nyingi kufamia semu semu akijua kwamba semu hizo akizivamia amekumaliza Amana kuhusuru kiasi kwamba hauna wezo kufanya chochote. He uses the same methods against individuals or families. Utumia mbinu hizo kwa mtu binafsi ama kwa watu jamii. Because he may bring a situation in the home that even though you are doing very well economically, you may have been uh, doing great business, you have a good job, you have things that are generating income. But then suddenly he uses one of the methods, for example, bring sickness. And when he releases sickness either to all the members or one of the members of the family, then productivity goes down and eventually he brings people to a position of desperation. Na hivyo basi adui akitaka kuvamia, wenda katumia na mnoyote ile kwamba kwenye jamii, wenda katuma ni magonjo, akawale maza nguvu, Akawafikisha mali ambapo, yani kabisa hamna namna. He may bring wrong decisions, investment wrong decisions, and you invest a lot of money in a business that will never give you back any returns. Ama kwamba anaweza, akawapa mamuzi mabaya, tuseme kibiashara, mukafanya maigezo ambayo, kila kitu kikazama, yani biashara ya zamisha kila kitu. Or he may bring conflict between the husband and the wife or the family members. And when he brings conflicts, you need to know the Bible says that two are better than one because they have a good reward, a good reward for their labor. And when there is no unity in the family, then even the efforts of generating income is frustrated. Na hivyo kama uh, Biblia inavyosema kwamba uh, wawili ni bora kuliko mmoja na anavoleta mizozo kwamba hamna kuelewana. Hivyo basi itakuwa kwamba amelemaza kabisa uweza wenu wa kupata faida. Or he may make you disregard the covenant between you and God if you are born again or if you are not born again he may just use whatever means because you are not in covenant you don't have any divine protection and so because you are vulnerable he may use any attack to destroy your capacity ama iwapo kama umeokoka anaweza akakusababisha magano yako na Mungu ikavunjika ukawa kwenye hali ambayo hujiwezi ama kama hata hukuokoka atatumia hiyo fursa ni kwa sababu hauna ulinzi hata mali yako haina ulinzi wa kiungo the situation in the city of samaria was so bad Hali katika mji wa Samaria ulikuwa ni mbaya. Now the Bible says they began to eat donkey heads. Biblia inasema wakafikia kula vichwa vya punda. In Israel donkeys are unclean and even here in 
in Africa, very few people actually eat donkeys. Ah, uh, kule Israeli punda ana chukuliwa kama mnyama aliyo na jisi. Nata pa Afrika punda kukula labda tu wale wabucha wale. So what happened is the entire nation began to do things that were uncommon by reason of this siege. Na chenye kilifanyika ni kwamba Israeli wakaanza kufanya vitu visio vya kawaida kutokana na vile walikuwa wamezingirwa. They didn't have food so they were eating dust dung. Hawakukua na chakula wakaanza kuyala mavi ya njiwa. They didn't have food. Women began to slaughter their own children. Hawakukua na chakula, wamama wakaanza kuwachinja watoto wao waliowaza. Those are extremely desperate situations. Hizo ni hali ambazo kidogo zimepita mipaka. When a woman would go and kill her own child just for her own personal survival, then the situation is so desperate. Ifike kiwango mama kumchinja mtoto ili kwamba ajihifadhi hai hiyo ni hali ambayo imepita so the things they began to do was so extreme mambo walioanza kuyafanya yalikuwa yamepita kiasi and they needed god otherwise there was no other way of escape because already the intent of king uh, ben hadad was to make sure that they are destroyed by the famine Hivyo basi wakao wamefika kikomo maana manuyo yake mfalme Ben Hadadi ilikuwa kwamba awafikisha mwisho. I believe there are several who had died just because of starvation. Na naamini kwamba ni wapo wengi walikuwa wameshaaga kwa sababu hiyo njaa. Famine is a weapon the enemy uses and has used it in many generations. Njaa ni silaha ambayo adui ameitumia na imetumika kwa vizazi vingi. So Where we are as a people we are in that kind of situation the enemy is setting up a siege against the globe na mali tumefikia hivyo hiyo ndio hali adui tayari ameshaweka usuru ama amezingira na kuibana mataifa mengi because the present global financial crisis and famine is negatively impacting the earth both communities and individuals and families na tunaona kwamba inja na tatizo ambalo liko kwenye ulimwengu linaathiri pakubwa sana jamii na familia ya watu we need to know the pandemic we have the covid 19 is only a precursor of the other things that must follow na nataka nikwambie ya kwamba ili janga tunaliona la covid 19 ni ashirio ama ni kionjo tu ya mambo ambayo inakuja because when people can no longer travel when people can no longer invest in what they used to invest when people are no longer able to do businesses as usual and when nations are not importing the necessary farm implements for farmers to be able to go to the farm then you need to know that we are heading towards a great famine across the globe wakati ambapo watu hawezi wakasafiri wanavotaka kusafiri watu hawezi kufanya biashara wanavotaka kufanya watu hawezi kuagiza vifaa vya ukulima ili kwamba wakulima wana vifaa vya kutosha kwa ajili ya kulima ujue kwamba tayari tuko kuingia kwenye njaa iliyokuwa zaidi this pandemic has caused so many people to lose their jobs Janga hili limesababisha wengi kuikosa ama kuachishwa ajira yao. And has provoked a major financial crisis. Na sasa imeipua tatizo kubwa la kifedha. That is already sweeping across the globe. Ambaye sasa hizi sasa inafagia ulimwengu mzima. The level of unemployment all over the world is at an alarming rate. Na tukiangalia viwango vya kukosa ajira kote ulimwenguni Vimbo katika hali ya kutisha. Major companies are now reeling under heavy burdens of debt, financial stress and they are faced with bankruptcy. Na mashirika makubwa na kampuni kubwa uh, zimekabiliwa na mziko mkubwa wa madeni mpaka kufika kiwango cha kuweza kufilisika. For almost uh, almost eight or so months 
our schools in this nation are going to remain closed. Na kwa karibu miezi minane uh, vyo vyote na sehemu za kwa mafundisho itakuwa imefungwa. And that means they are those people who used to trade with the schools either in books, uniforms or food and many other stationaries. Now they are, don't have jobs because there is no income through the schools. Na zipo kampuni mashirika na hata watu ambao walitegemea haswa elimu ili kuweza uh, kuwafadhili na vitu walivyohitaji vitabu na mambo kama hayo lakini kwa sasa hakuna churches are closed makanisa imefungwa and we have so many people that are losing jobs in those sectors na wapo watu wengi wanapoteza ajira katika sekta hizo so we shouldn't take whatever is happening for granted as a people na tusichukulie kinachofanyika kwa bure kama watu and we shouldn't sit and just open our mouth and get surprised because of what is happening you need to arise and know what you ought to do uh, in this season for you to escape whatever the enemy is doing atuhitaji kukaa hivi kwamba tupanua vinywa kwa mishangao imetupasa kuangalia kuchukua hatua tuone vile tutapata njia ya kupona families are under siege Familia zime, ziko katika hali ya kufungwa. There is serious breakups taking place. People are killing one another. Na kuna kufarakana kwingi, watu wanauana. And it is happening across the globe. Na inafanyika kote The level mbunga. of divorces is just gone a uh, notch higher. Viwango vya talaka vimepanda vipimo zaidi. There is a serious mental in a sickness increase on the face of the earth maongezeko ya magonjo ya kiakili katika ule mwanguni kote people are dying of depression watu wanakufa kwa mkaso wa akili there are so many people who are dying because of suicide wapo wengi wanakufa kwa ajili ya kujiua young girls are selling their bodies because of because of hunger looking for something to do wasichana wadogo wanauza mili yao ili wapate riziki yao we are experiencing Uh, a lot of escalation of human trafficking na tunaona e, biashara ya kuuza wanadamu ikiongezeka the other day i saw a documentary on television about the karamoja girls na niliona makala fulani kwenye runinga kuhusu wasichana wa karamoja and these young girls are being sold by their parents at only 1500 shillings na hao wasichana wanauzwa ni wazazi wao kwa shilingi 1500 actually to buy chicken is more expensive than to sell your own child yani kununua kuku ni ya juu gharama ya juu kuliko msichana wako kumuuza and they are selling these girls to people they don't know when they don't even know where these children are going to go wanauzia watu wasiowajua ni watu wa wapi hata watoto wao wajua wanaenda wapi and they are not coming in, in two or three there are multitudes of girls waiting to be sold na si kwamba ni wachache ni halaiki ni wengi wanaotaka kuuzwa and suddenly they are put into lorries and trafficked into Nairobi they are thrown into the streets and they don't know how to live na wanaweka kwenye lori ni kama mambuzi wanatupa Nairobi wanaacha huko mitaani haieleweki wanaenda wapi they are sold as house girls and all kinds of things wanauzwa kama yaya wa nyumbani na vitu kama hivyo so poverty is ravaging people's lives and we are not ignorant of what is happening in the world maskini wasorotesha maisha ya watu na si kwamba tumekosa kujua kinachofanyika duniani. We daily hear of people drowning in the Mediterranean Sea or in the Red Sea crossing over from Africa to go to Europe or to go to Asia are uh, looking for livelihoods, looking for some green pastures. Na tusikia habari za watu kuzama katika bahari ya shamu wakivuka kwenda Ulaya ili kwamba wajitafutia riziki. But we need to know as a people of God that as these things are increasing and the level of poverty is escalating we have to know that our heavenly father is not ignorant of what is happening to you as an individual nataka wale mambo haya yanapendelea kuongezeka na hali hii inaendelea kuzidi tutambue kwamba baba wetu wa mbinguni hajakaa pale pasina kuwa na mpango na sisi god 
is not shocked with whatever is shocking the world. Mungu apigwi mshangao na kinachoshangaza ulimwengu. What he is waiting for is for a people who can sincerely turn to God with a clean heart and they tell the Lord help us in this situation. Anachongoja ni kwamba apate watu wenye moyo safi wakimwambia Bwana Mungu tusaidie hivi ndivyo tulivyo kwa sasa. Because God's desire is that you do not are get overwhelmed by the situation that is happening and this, the crisis that is happening na tamaniyo la mungu ni kwamba usilemewe usigaligishwa na hali tunayoyipitia kwa sasa but he wants you to be ready anachokitaka kwako ni uwe tayari to face this crisis kuweza kukabiliana na tatizo hili and you need to know what you ought to do so that you take hold of the supernatural provisions that is released by his power during such a time na anachokitaka ni uweze kuwa na uwezo kuweza kujiunganisha na msaada wake wa kiungu unaohitaji kwa wakati kama huu what you do with your small resources and concerning your finances today is very important because it will determine how you will survive in this situation. Unachofanyia lisiki kidogo, rasilimali kidogo ulionayo, itaamua vile utakavyoweza jimudu katika wakati kama huu. Because the escape of saints is supernaturally and divinely determined if they hold on to his command and instructions kuokoka ama kuepuka kwao waaminio kwa tegemea sana jinsi wao wako tayari kuitikia maagizo ya kiungu ya kupona you kwao you need to pay attention to what god is saying lazima uweze kuzingatia yale mungu anayasema you need to set a strong covenant relationship with him lazima uweke maagano mazito na mungu god had a solution in Samaria but nobody was interested Mungu alikuwa na suluhisho kwa watu wa Samaria lakini hakukuepo na mtu alikuwa na haja kuipata kwa They were mungu. trying their own means which ended up in them doing the uncommon things Walikuwa na jaribu njia zao zilizowasababisha kufanya mambo yasokuwa ya kawaida But all the same from day one to the day that the man of God speaks he was there and i believe god was providing for elisha he was not eating donkey heads he was not eating uh, the, the 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 dove's dungs he was not eating children he was there being provided for by the almighty god as a servant of god tokea siku tatizo lilianza mpaka siku ile tunapata mtumishi wa mungu anaongea elisha mungu alikuepo na nataka nikwambie kwamba Elisha ijapo alikuwa pale Samaria hakukula mavi ya njiwa, hakukula kichwa cha punda wala kukula mtoto kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa anamtoshelezea. You need to know that the eyes of the Lord watch over the righteous. Nataka ule kwamba macho ya Mungu huwaelekea wenye haki. And when God watches over you, he has good plans and good thoughts concerning your life. Na Mungu anapokutizama ana mipango mema na makusudi mema kwako. He is not in the business of allowing you to be attempted beyond what you are able to, to, to bear with your power. Yeye ajishukulishi na wewe kulemewa na uwezo yani kupata majaribu inayopita uwezo wako. Elisha was in the city the same city where people were dying where people were eating dove's dung where people were eating the donkeys and so forth. He was still in the same city with his elders. Na Elisha alikuwa kwenye ule mji tu ambako watu walikula mavianjiwa, kichwa cha punda, watu wanakufa. Alikuwepo na wazee wake. He was not a farmer so he didn't have any stores of food. Hakukuwa mkulima hivyo basi hakukuwa na magala ya, ya nafaka. He was not an industrialist so he wasn't having an extra bank account. Hakukuwa na viwanda kwa hivyo basi hakukuwa na account nyingine ya benki. But the man of God was still in the same city and we are not told that this man was famished because of famine. Na alikuwa kwenye mle mji ule hatusikia habari kwamba alikuwa anakufa njaa. Uh -uh. All the time God has a word in any dire situation you could be going through. Skiliza, kila wakati Mungu ana neno la kupona 
katika hali yoyote unayopitia he always sends his word that's why a paying attention to what god is saying to you and being obedient to what he has said is critical to your way of escape kwa hivyo mungu kila mara ana neno la kupona kwako hivyo ni upande wako kuweza kusingatia ni kipi anachosema bwana maana hicho ndicho kitakuokoa the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 Binasema katika Waebrania 12:23. It says 25, sorry. It says, "See that you do not refuse him who speaks." Yasema hivi, um, okay. Inasema angalieni msimkatae yeye anenaye. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. Angalieni msimkatae yeye anenaye. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven maana ikiwa hawakuokoka wale waliomkataa yeye aliyewaonya juu ya inji zaidi sana hatutaokoka sisi tukijiepusha na yeye atuonyaye kutoka mbinguni your escape is in the word he sends to you kuokoka kwako ni katika neno analolituma i say again your escape is in the word that he sends to you kuokoka kwako kumo katika neno analolituma second kings chapter 7 verse 1 in that very dire desperate circumstance when the king was the king of samaria was going to kill him kill the man of god because he was angry na katika ufalme wa pili saba mstari wa kwanza wakati ambapo mfalme wa samaria alikuwa amegadhabikia mungu na nabi wake na nataka kuwa nabi wa mungu instead of him going to seek the word he was blaming the man of god badala ya kutafuta neno la kupona ameenda kumshutumu he was castigating the man of god alikuwa anamkashifu mtumishi wa mungu that's why the world today is against the word of god and that's why other places they would not even say a word when they meet and they don't even have distancing they don't have even masks but the newspapers or the media will go and point to the church that is doing things and they are following the protocols that have been given but they don't say anything about the markets they don't say anything about aeroplanes that have more than 400 people inside it and people don't have distancing in the plane and yet they say things against the church na ulimwengu wa sasa angalia umekataa hata neno la Mungu toona ya kwamba kwingineko wana uhuru wa kufanya wanavyotaka kwenye ndege watu 400 kwenye masoko wapo watu lakini utashangaa mbona wanafuatilia kuangalia kanisa kunaendaje nasema ya kwamba kanisa hawazingatii masharti and most media is being used to send aspersions against men of god and against the church na hata vyombo vya habari vinatumika kuweza kuleta kashwa ama kukashifu watumishi wa Mungu na makanisa it was the same with the king of samaria kadhalika ndivyo ilivyokuwa na mfalme wa samaria he didn't see that the solution was in the man of god ye akuona suluhisho limo kwenye mtu wa Mungu he only saw that he was a problem to the land ye aliona wewe mtumishi wa Mungu ndiye analeta shida inaongezeka it is the same there are so many people who say things about men of god across the world because they see the problem in the man of god and they don't see answers or solutions na hivyo ndivyo inaofanyika duniani wengi wanaona shida kwenye mtu wa Mungu lakini hawaoni suluhisho litapatikana kwa wewe mtumishi but i want you to know where the world is now it will take miracles of god to help the people of the world nataka nikwambie penye kumefikia ulimwenguni sasa itachukua mujiza wa mungu ndio watu wasaidike samaria needed a divine super natural intervention for the people to be saved from death samaria ilihitaji msaada wa kiungu wa ghafla wa kimuujiza 
kuokoa na kuponya watu na kifo we need the same hand to save us nasi hata leo twahitaji huo mkono utuokoe jesus is still the same yesterday today and forever what he did 1000 years ago he is still able to do he is the same he has never lost his power yesu ni yule yule jana leo hata milele alichokifanya miaka 2000 iliyopita ana uwezo wa kufanya hivyo hivyo na anatutendea hata na sasa so when the king reached the man of god he didn't have to shout he didn't have to fight with him he didn't have to do a word anything else he only spoke what the lord had been speaking to him all this time wakati eh, nabii wa mungu ah, 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 alifikia watu wa, wa mfalme hakuhitaji kusema mambo mengi alisema tu hilo neno ambalo wakati huu wote mungu alikuwa ameshamwambia then elisha verse one, the bible says then elisha said here the word of the lord elisha akasema lisikieni neno la bwana hear the word of the lord lisikieni neno la bwana and he said that says the lord bwana asema hivi tomorrow about this time a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and the two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria kesho panaposa hii kipimo cha unga mzuri kitauzwa kwa shekeli na vipimo viwili vya shahiri kwa shekeli langoni pa Samaria the captain who had been sent to murder the man of god when he heard those words he looked at the man of god and he said this is impossible how can it happen yule akida aliyetuma na mfalme kumua mtu wa Mungu aliposikia habari akasema mm jambo ile haliwezekani it won't happen even if god had to come down from heaven akasema ile alifanyiki hata akashuka Mungu the man of god said you will see it with your eyes tomorrow he wasn't talking about 50 years from now he was saying tomorrow it will happen and you will see it with your own eyes but you will never enjoy it na akamwambia kwamba kesho Si eti miaka 50 ija kesho ni kuona utaona kwa macho lakini utashindi to us that it is possible for him to turn around the tables we better believe it iwapo Mungu anatuambia ana uwezo wa kugeuza kila kitu mara moja tumwamini because our escape is in the word that he has sent maana kupona kwetu ni katika neno ambalo amelituma and as i've been praying since last week The one thing the Holy Spirit has kept on telling me is that we need to enlighten the church and to equip the people so that number one they shift their level of fear and they shift their level of doubt and their level of anxiety and lift up their eyes and they see what God is able to do because he is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above what we are worrying about or praying or cursing or doing whatever we are doing na nimekuwa nikiomba kutoka juma jana nimemsikia roho mtakatifu akiendelea kulisukuma neno ile kwenye moyo wangu ya kwamba tunahitaji kuelimisha na kuamazisha watu wa Mungu waweze kukabiliana na hofu zao na tashwishi zao na mashaka walionayo wakainua imani yao kumtizama Mungu kwa sababu Mungu ana uwezo wa kutenda zaidi kwa vipimo kupita mawazo na akili zetu Jesus said for man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from his mouth Yesu akasema Mwanadamu hataishi kwa mkate peke yake ila kwa kila neno litokalo kinywani mwa Mungu. Your survival is not in how much food you have in your store. Kupona kwako hakutegemei vyakula ulionao kwenye gala ama hela ulionazo kwenye benki. You can keep a lot of storage of food and something can happen to that house. Unaweza ukaweka akiba ya vyakula lakini ujui nini kitatokea kwa hiyo chakula yako. When we had this coming in 2007 and 2008 we the lord had laid in my heart to uh, stock my house here in Milimani. 
Uh, tulipokuwa na gasi ya baada ya uchaguzi wa mwaka elfu mbili na saba na nane. Bwana alikuwa ameweka kwenye moyo wangu niweze kuweka akiba ya vyakula kwenye nyumba yangu nilipokuwa naishi milimani. And I went I did serious shopping. Na nikaenda nikafanya ununuzi mkubwa. But on the Sunday when the city had just burnt on Saturday you all remember I was here preaching I had a few people just about 7 or 10 people who came and I I was preaching in the middle of preaching a friend of mine just when I had finished preaching as I was going to the office a friend of mine from Nakuru who was working in the special branch called me and he told me please leave the city immediately i said what is happening i said i'm staying here this is my home he said the reason why i have called you is because i know you i know that you will not leave you will stay in the city but i begged you you are my pastor i beg you right now there are people who have been sent hunting for you and they are ready to kill you with the, they have an order to make sure that you are dead uh, wakati huo nikapigiwa simu maana nilikuwa nahubiri hapa nilikuwa na watu kama saba hivi nikishamaliza nikaenda ofisini nikapigiwa simu na special branch huko nakuru maana yeye uh, ni mshirika wangu wa zamani akaniambia ondoka mara moja kwa sababu nimekupigia najua wewe utazidi kukaa pale lakini kuna watu wamepewa agizo na kukuja kukumaliza I said my brother I'm not leaving the city. Let them come. Nikamwambia ndugu yangu mimi kwa mji siondoki waje tu. And I had the urgency in his voice. He said for the sake of your family. Na nikasikia udharura kwenye sauti yake. Akaniambia yani kwa ajili tu ya familia yako. And for the sake of the church. Na kwa sababu ya kanisa. You will not be a hero when you are in the grave. Hautakuwa ni shujaa ukiwa kaburini. So please I beg you I am not speaking to threaten you. I have intelligence information from my friends in Kisumu and they have told me they have been asking me where I am so that I should be warned. Na uh, akaniambia kwamba nina habari za uchasusi na kutoka Kisumu wameni uh, wameni wameulizia ili niweze kukuonya usikae hapo. And so I packed up and I left. Nikafunga vyangu nikaenda. The food I had already purchased I didn't have to eat it. Vyakula ambavyo nilikuwa nimeshavinua kuviacha hapo siku vila. So it is not how much food we have spared. Kwa hivyo sio kiasi cha pesa tu ama vyakula tumeweka kibu. It is not how much money you have in your bank account. Wala sio pesa ulizonazo kwenye account yako. When disaster hits, it ignores all these safety measures you put in place. Janga ama shida ikitokea inakaidi E, e, hatua zote za kiusalama ambazo umeziweka so people will depend on what they have that's why the bible says horses are a vain thing for war watu watataka kutegemea walichonacho biblia inasema falasi ni kitu bure Psalms 33 verse number 16 it says a king is not is is saved by the mul- no no king is saved by the multitude of an army Mfa amna mfalme anaokoka kwa wingi wa majeshi. A mighty man is not delivered by a great strength. Wala mtu shujaa aokoki kwa nguvu zake. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Falasi ni kitu bure kwa usalama. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Wala hamponye mtu kwa wingi wa nguvu zake. Your money can fail. Pesa yako itakosa kukusaidia. Your education can fail. Hata masomo yako itakosa kukusaidia. Your strength can fail. Nguvu zako zitakuisha. Because no king is saved by the multitude of an army. Maana hapana mfalme anaokolewa kwa wingi wa uwezo wake. In Samaria there were armies. Pale Samaria walikuwa na majeshi. But they were paralyzed. Lakini walikuwa wamelemazwa. They could do nothing. Haongeweza kitu. The doctors were there but the disease that was eating and killing the people was not curable by any medical understanding mandaktari walikuwepo lakini magonjo na maradhi yaliyokuwepo hayakuweza kuwa na tiba because the only medicine for hunger is food maana 
dawa ya njaa ni chakula so even doctors in the city were dying hata madaktari mjini walikufa as it is happening with covid 19 But it's my prayer that the children of the Almighty God will be saved by the power of God. Naomba watoto wa Mungu waokolewe na kupona kupitia nguvu za Mungu. If you believe it shout a better amen. Wapo unaamini sema amen. Bible says a horse is a vain hope for safety. Farasi haifai kitu kwa wokovu. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Wala hampunyi mtu kwa wingu wa nguvu zake. Behold the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Tazama jicho la Bwana likwao wa mchao. On those who hope in his mercy. Wazingoje hayo fadhili zake. To deliver their soul from death ili kuwaponya nafsi zao na mauti and to keep them alive in famine na kuwaisha wakati wa njaa it is not by might nor by power si kwa uwezo wala majeshi it is because the hand of god is involved in lifting you from the pit of despair and desperation na ni kwa wakati mkono bwana unahusika kukutoa kwenye ile shimo la taharuki na I am here to declare to somebody you don't have to feel desperate the lord has not forsaken you he has not left you he has not forgotten you he is watching over your life he is making a way where there is no way for you na kuangalisha mtu nataka nikutamkea kwamba bwana hakukuacha bwana anakupenda na kujali na yeye ni tumaini lako kwenye ile tatizo lako when everything around you fails he cannot fail wakati kila kitu kwako kimeshindwa hatashindwa when everything cannot work our god is never redundant wakati hakuna kitu kinafanya kazi mungu wetu hawezi kukaa katika hali ya kutokufanya kitu present help in time of need yeye ni msaada wa karibu wakati wa hitaji you need his supernatural activities in your life that's why you have to start up your faith and elevate yourself to stand in covenant with him na a uh, a uh, kwa, kwa hivyo Mungu uh, ana uwezo wa kukutoa mali pale kwa hivyo unahitaji kuinua imani yako na kuweka maagano yako na Mungu put your faith in his word and in his power weka imani yako kwa nguvu za Mungu na neno lake he is well able to do exceedingly abundantly far above whatever you are intending anaweza kutenda mengi juu zaidi ya vipimo kupita ile unaowaza ama kufikiria and this afternoon he is breaking forth for you na mchana wa leo bwana anapenya njia kwa ajili yako i say this afternoon this god is coming to your side there is gonna be a supernatural visitation in your family in your home and in whatever you are laying your hands upon to do for he said i will bless the work of your hands sakari kwambe mchana wa leo anakuja njia yako kusaidia kwa maana bwana amesema kwamba atabarikia kazi za mikono yako if only you can obey his word iwapo tu utalitii neno lake if only you can pay attention to what he say iwapo tu unaweza singatia anachosema remember for man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god kumbuka mtu aishi kwa mkate pekee lakini kwa kila neno litokalo kinywani mwa mungu you have a place of safety we una mali pa usalama. We have a place where we can anchor our hope and our faith. Tuna mali pa kutia nanga imani yetu na tumaini. A place that nothing is shakeable because he cannot be shaken by anything. Mali kusikotikizwa maana atikwizi Mungu na kitu. Jesus said he a person that is building his house and lays a foundation upon the rock who is Jesus even when the storms hit it shall not collapse the house akasema mtu ajengaye nyumba kwa msingi mwamba ambaye ni Kristo Yesu atakukaja madhoruba ikapiga ile nyumba haitaanguka trust in him mtumaini ya bwana you can simply trust him mtumaini ya bwana weka imani yako kwa Yesu just like a little girl or a little baby would trust the hands of the mother or the hands of the father when you throw the child even if it is 10 feet in the sky the child will still be laughing knows that i am not going to crush my mother is going to hold me uangalia kuwa na imani kama ya mtoto mchanga akarushwa na baba yake mama yake angani yeye ataendelea kucheka maana anajua kwamba kuanguka sianguki 
Jesus said, you need to be like little children. You need to have the faith of a little boy or a little child. Yes, kasema imani yenu iwe kama ya mtoto mchanga. He said, unless you be converted and be like a little bit baby, you shall in no wise escape. Nasema kwamba usipoge huko kama mtoto mchanga, kama mtoto mchanga, hauna njia ya kupona. So trust him. Mtumainie bwana. Trust in him. Mtumainie bwana. Trust and obey. Mtumainie bwana muamini na umtii. For there is no other way but to trust and obey stand up on your feet Holy Spirit we thank you your house is on fire but God is able to release a way to quench the fire hata kama nyumba yako inateketea muto Yesu atapeana njia ya kupona. Lift up your hands and just talk to him. Inua mikono yako nena na Bwana. See him coming forth for you. Muone Bwana akitokea kwenye maisha yako. See him opening a highway for you. Muone Bwana akikufanyizia njia. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Yesu ni njia, ukweli na He is our answer. Yesu ni jawabu kwetu. He is the way maker. Ndiye mwenye kufanya njia pasipo na njia. You can put your hope in him. Weka tumaini lako kwake. He never fails. Hashindi. Thank you blessed father. Asante baba wa baraka. I say talk to him this afternoon. Nena tuna bwana mchana wa leo. Shala baba la masaka to mosha. Rike mandala ma seketo mosha. Whatever scares you does not scare him. Kinachokutisha wewe akimtishi Mungu. Jesus cares so much about you. Yesu anakujali sana. He went to hell for your sake. Alienda jehanamu kwa ajili yako. He can step in the fire for your sake. Ataingia motoni kwa ajili yako. He can do whatever he desires to do to protect his own. Atafanya kila anavyoweza kufanya kuwalinda wa kwake. Blessed be your name mighty God. Jina lako litukuzwe bwana. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. Exalted high above worship of the people of the earth I see the Lord I see the Lord my eyes have seen the King the Lamb upon the throne who reigns for Jesus Father, thank you. Baba itu, asante. You have never abdicated your responsibilities over your children. Ujawai suzia majukumu yako kwa watoto wako. And we know even this afternoon as we are standing in this place. Bana tajua hata mchana uno vosimama mali hapa mbele. There is already a solution for every single individual under the sound of my voice. Kuna solution kwa kila moja anayesikia sauti yangu. Bring healing in that family. Bring healing 
in this body. Lord, bring resolutions to the situations that your children are going through. Let uponyaji kwenye nyumba hii kwenye hata mwili huu Bwana suluhisho kwa shida wanazozipitia watoto wao. Let your blessing come forth into their lives. Baraka zako zikaweze kuonekana kwa maisha yao. Lord I thank you because you are our answer, our hope, our refuge. Asante Bwana wewe ni jawabu kwetu, tumaini na kimbilio. It happened to all of us. Ikawezekana kwa kila mmoja wetu. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Let's Amen. put our hands together for him. Tupige Bwana Yesu makofi. Every fear is expelled out of your heart. Kila hofu imeondoka katika moyo wako. Be confident with the Lord. Kuwa na ujasiri na imani kwa Bwana. In Jesus name. Let's be seated as we take out our tithes, our offerings, our seeds. Let's give to the Lord even in such times God bring a breaks forth for his people to show forth that he is God. Kwa hivyo tumtolee Bwana wakati kama Mungu anawatokea watu wake kuonyesha yeye ni Mungu. We thank God. He gives us opportunities to excel. Yeye hutupea fursa za kuweza kufanikiwa. And I want you to go to your embassy and use the pay bill to send your tithe, your offerings, even you that is watching me by internet or whichever means. Nenda kwenye simu yako, kwenye pay bill. Hata wewe unaungana na sisi kwenye mtandao na kwenye radio. Our God is a blesser. So as you give please use our pay bill number 5990585990588 Tumia namba yetu ya pay bill ambayo ni 5990588 Ntarudia 5990588 Where it is asking for account you can write there offering or tithe or whatever you're giving. Mali inakuuliza kuhusu account yako unaweza kuandika hapo sadaka ama Those who have cash please I want you to prepare it I want to pray for you right now. Enyi mlio na pesa za mkononi nataka uiandae nataka nikuombe. Let's all stand up as we give our offerings. Join us you that is online. Tusimame ulio kwenye mtandao ungana na sisi. Lift up your offering to the Lord. Precious Father, thank you. We look unto you, the hope of our salvation. You are the Lord who sincerely blesses us. Your blessings make it rich, adds no sorrow. And I pray, dear Lord, that you release supernaturally into the needs and the situations of your people. Every seed sown, may it re receive a hundredfold return to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, blessed Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Uh, you can bring your offerings right here. And the Lord will bless you. We are coming back this evening. We started a very powerful teaching yesterday. I'm continuing today. And I invite all of you, both leaders and all those who desire to receive something from the Lord. If this is a season where you need to fill your heart and your life with the truth and with the word of God. So be available. Cool. Every time the Lord has a convocation, there is something that is released, the anointing to change your lives. Amen. And we have made ourselves available to make sure that none of you will famish from the word of God. Amen. You will be fed. If you are willing, you will receive it. On Sunday, we have six services. So far, only four services are in, five services are in operation. So, the reason why the sixth service is not happening is because somebody has not made up their mind to be in the house of God. Don't be afraid. Be in the house of God. Be equipped. And the Lord will bless you. We are available in the lunch hour, in the morning glory, in the evenings to help you grow in the knowledge of God. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much. Let's all stand up.
We thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.